Barton upon Humber is an historic market town dating back to Roman times. Situated on the south side of the Humber, it has approximately 10,000 residents. It was prosperous in the 1800s and has a legacy of Victorian buildings. Wilderspin National School on Queen Street was founded in 1844 and was one of many built in this country by educational reformer Samuel Wilderspin. Barton is the only one that survives. Identified by English Heritage as one of the most important schools in England, it is a Grade II listed building, but in 1978 its condition had deteriorated and it was closed as a school. Now restored, the building combines an educational heritage centre and museum celebrating the Wilderspin legacy, including recreations of schoolrooms and living history interpretations with community facilities. The rainwater harvesting was part of this restoration and was undertaken to help reduce the running costs without affecting either the external or internal appearance of the listed building. Let's take a look. Uh, my name is Peter Smithwaite. I'm a volunteer at the Wilderspin National School Museum. We are looking at rainwater harvesting um, in this particular building. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what, what, what prompted the decision um, to have this? Uh, I think it was originally the architects who put the, the building in. They suggested that you should um, try and be as environmentally responsible as possible, I think. And uh, it was easy enough to put in because we had a large space above in the loft, so it's quite convenient. And you don't need too much pipe work and things like that. So. I mean, would, it would have been ideal, really, to put uh, photovoltaic cells in the middle but uh, English Heritage weren't very keen on it at the time. So. There's nothing visible externally, is there? No, nothing at all. Mm. And was that a consideration? I think so, yes, because um, it's a listed building, so it's always good not to put anything externally on listed buildings, I think. Well, when it rains, instead of the rainwater going straight down the drain, it fills the tank up. Um, if if, it, if the tank has enough water in it, then when you flush the toilets, it will flush from that rainwater. Now, obviously, we have dry spells, um, so when, the, when there isn't sufficient rainwater, then it filled up from the mains. So it's a balancing act between mains water and rainwater, but the hope is that it will mainly use rainwater for all the flushing of the toilets and um, save the water that comes in. Really. You don't so much use so much main, mains water, uh, it will save you money and it will help the environment as far as we're concerned. A lot of these tanks are put underground. Uh, a lot of other people who um, install them, you, you dig a big hole in the ground and you can, you can put them in there. But you'd have to have a mechanical pump then to get the water out, Perhaps, presumably. Yes, yeah, that's, I mean, that's the advantage of this one. We don't have um, so much pipe work. Is all your roof, roof area uh, utilised, or just one section? No, it's just the V in the middle of the roof area that's utilised, and we get all the water from that. But uh, it's quite considerable. We do get uh, quite a lot of water, and it has been known to overflow when we get a lot of rain. So uh, I think we're quite getting enough for what we need. Do you have to check this very often? Uh, no. The only thing that's really you need to do is, um, which is a bit of a nuisance, up. Uh, you've got to go outside and there's a, uh, a filter. Yeah. And, and there's one in here as well. And we did find, after not very long, that it got covered in leaves, so the water didn't, wasn't getting in. So, uh, so how often do you change the filters then? Uh, well, you don't need to change them, but you need to check them. They need to be done probably about every three months. Do you have any, um, anything that tells you how much water you've gathered over a period of time? Are there any metres or No, gauges? A, it's, it's a fairly simple system. It's a mechanical system. Uh, there are more complicated systems now, I'm told, which would, which would do that. But the only way you can really tell what's happening is to compare, is to measure the water you're actually using from the mains, which we do on a, a monthly basis. And you can see the fluctuation. I mean, I, I don't, 
we have roughly the same number of people using the place all the time, yet the, um, the usage of water goes up and down quite a lot. Um, it looks to be by how wet the seasons are, but unless, until you've got really four or five years down the line, I don't think you're really going to tell properly. I think the primary consideration was to do a bit for the planet. Um, once you look at it and they say, it, it, was, it should save us a bit of money. Um, that would be an interesting thing to have, but I don't think that's the primary consideration. Um, with the building in general, it was always thought we should use as little energy as possible. Um, it's not an energy efficient building, so anything you can save um, is useful.